learn how to crochet the houndstooth design. This is a completely reversible design. It looks more dominant in one color on one side than the next. And it's a perfect one to jump into when you're learning because you can carry the yarn across the top so you have less tails to weave in. Let's do that today. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. The crochet houndstooth pattern is very similar to the knitted version of the pattern, but you can see in the knitted version that it curls because that's what's called a stuck in knit. But of course the uh, crochet one is completely reversible and it lays nice and flat. So what you're going to need is your hook and make sure that you have an appropriate weight of yarn for that hook. I'm going to use these contrasting colors. Uh, this is from Yarn Inspirations called Burnett Beyond. It's a super bulky six weight yarn. You can use a worsted weight. You'll just want a hook that's appropriate to that. And the square that we're going to make is going to be just slightly bigger than this one. It's going to be about five and a half inches uh, wide or uh, 14 centimeters. And I know a lot of people are making them for the Harry Styles cardigan. So yes, you can make this square just for that one if you're using the yarn and hook I am. Grab your supplies and we'll begin. Be sure to get your pattern at the link down below. You just open up the YouTube video description and get the link for the pattern that's written out. Plus there's links for single and double crochet which are the stitches that you need for this one. Now I will make the stitches on this video here but those videos slow it way down including going over how to weave in the tails which you'll want later. Now uh, let's talk about the foundation chain. If you're used to crocheting, you know that sometimes you go into one loop on the foundation chain and sometimes two. If you make it with one, uh, going into one, uh, you actually will need to add a row of single crochet at the top because it makes it just a little bit taller down here. And so you'll need to know that. And I've got notes in the pattern for that and I'll remind you later. And then if you go into uh, the two loops, if you like to do that, then you don't need to add anything later on. I'll show you how to go in through either loop uh, in an easy way if uh, you've struggled with that before. All right, I've got my two colors of yarn. Just set the second one aside. We're going to make a slip knot with the first color. Uh, leave a tail, make the slip knot however you like. I wind mine around my finger twice. Take the back loop over the front once and do it one more time up and over the tip of your finger. And that will form a slip knot. Just place it on your hook and tighten that up a little bit. It's nice and loose. It's not going anywhere, but it's not too tight. Okay, so we're going to chain an odd number of stitches. I'm going to do 15 uh, in this gauge here. You can do whatever size you want. Just make sure that um, you chain the width that you want and then add a chain. So an odd number. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so we have 15, and of course you need to use your YouTube controls to slow that down or speed it up if you need to, or pause. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to go in through either the uh, one loop only or two loops. Uh, the first thing you need to do is decide if you want to go through one or two loops and you're going to be making a single crochet into the second chain from the hook okay so single crochet and second chain if you're going through one loop we're going to count um, one at the top and two at the top and you can see that that's where we go through if we want to go through one loop and yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two, and that is a single crochet. All right, I'm gonna back it out. All right, if you wanna go through the two loops, I suggest that you look at the loops, not the top ones, but look at the two bottom loops. It's actually easier to uh, get the two loops on the top of your hook that way. So if I count one and then two, just go in through that one there, and you'll see that you get those two loops at the top. It has that uh, chain look to it. And then you're just going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through. One, two. Okay? So uh, you're going to keep going uh, whichever way uh, you wanted to make yours. I'm going to do mine with uh, going through just the one loop. Okay? 
uh, the first stitch going through the second chain from the hook, single crochet. So there's one, two. I'm going to yarn over and pull through a loop, yarn over and pull through both. So we have single crochet. And now the very next stitch we want to go through a double. Okay, we may make a double crochet. So we're not going to go through the one that's pulled out right here. We want to go through the very next one. Make sure don't skip any other ones. We're going to yarn over first, go through that. Okay, yarn over and pull up another loop. So you have three on your hook. Yarn over and just pull through the first two. One and two. And then yarn over and pull through two. And that completes your double crochet. So you're going to continue this pattern on a single, a double, all the way until the last stitch, which will be a double, but I'll join you there before you begin it. Okay, so don't complete that double. And just keep going. Okay, so next stitch over, single. Next one, double. Make sure you yarn over first. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, continue and pause your video as you need. Okay, we're down to the last two stitches. I've got a single, and then we have a double. So if you uh, see that you do not have one more stitch remaining, you may need to uh, take out your work, frog it, rip it back, <laughs> rip, rip, rip it up, that's what that's called, and go backward and make sure that you've got the right number of stitches, you didn't skip any. All right, for this last one, make sure that you have your second yarn handy. We're going to begin it, but not finish it. So we're gonna go into this last stitch, and we're going to yarn over for a double, go into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops only, and then the second half of the stitch, we need to uh, drop our first yarn, grab our next color, Take uh, your yarn and pull it through. You can hold it at the back of the loop there, or hold it at the back of the hook. Pull it through those two stitches to finish off the stitch. And now we need a, um, a chain. So just grab your working yarn and yarn over and chain, okay? And then you're gonna turn it. And I suggest putting in your hook into that very first stitch while you can see it. And then you can just lay your um, old yarn Okay, the previous one right on top of that hook there and then grab your tail from uh, the new color. You can leave this one and weave it in later if you want, but I like to grab it right now. Okay, and now you can get your working yarn and go ahead and yarn over and pull through all of that. Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both. All right, and then that's nice and locked in. We're going to yarn over and do that again. Now your yarn is laying up on top. Just go through those stitches there in that very first stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. There's your single and double crochet. And just continue on. You need a single and then a double. And continue to let those yarns just lay on top. And so as you go, you can cut off your new tail and let the previous color lay there. Okay, so continue along, uh, pause your video and I'll meet you at the end of this row uh, to turn it again. See you soon. We're coming down to the end of this. We've got one last stitch. You can see it kind of go down here and you might think, hey, I'm done, but you're not. You've got one more stitch down at the end. Before you do that, let's do a little bit of um, troubleshooting, problem solving, uh, because as you're new, you may um, hold things a little bit looser. I know that uh, I had to get used to carrying yarns above, so I figured you might. So what you can do is on this tail here, go ahead and give it a nice tug to pull out any slack and then you can kind of pull back on this one to make sure it's the right size okay so you haven't pulled it too tight and then you can do this to the previous yarn so go ahead and make sure that um, you don't have a bunch of extra loops and slack in here and then just kind of pull that back out and make sure it's uh, even okay and then I just do that just to make sure that I don't have any extra big loops I'm um, hanging out the back if you do um, I can show you how to fix that later on in the end of the video but I just wanted you to know how to um, fix it as you go okay so let's do the last stitch we're going to yarn over go through that very last stitch make sure you're going through the entire chain 
Okay, and yarn over and pull through the first two only. And then now we're going to switch, okay? We're going to just drop our color, pull up the previous color, and we're gonna pull through and chain one. Turn your work. Now you're gonna grab that. You can leave the, the other tail hanging now. You're just gonna grab the previous yarn, place it up on top, go through that first stitch, make sure the previous yarn is above, and yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through for a single. Do that again, yarn over, go through the next, yarn over, and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two for your double. Just continue going on until that last stitch and keep rotating around. I'll show you again one more time rotating it around, uh, but let's show you for a moment how to uh, cut this yarn. So you can see I had a little bit extra here. We just pull that and this beginning tail is now fully woven in. You can cut it, okay? Give it a good pull and it's now tucked in, all right? And then the other beginning tail, you can just weave that in later on, all right? That's all you need to do and continue moving along. We'll see you at the end here. Okay, we come down to the last stitch, and it's easy to see that we only have one stitch left. It's just more defined now that we've got more of a structure to our work. Just go ahead and yarn over, go through that very last stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, uh, whoops, uh, drop, <laughs> drop your old yarn, pick up the next one, yarn over, and chain one with the new yarn turn your work, grab that yarn from the previous row, and we're going to single crochet and double all the way down the line as usual. So that's it. You just keep going on and on until you get to the desired length, and I suggest that you end with the same color that you began with, and when you uh, finish out and complete the very last stitch, you pull through the same color at the end when you do that one. So if you wanted to uh, end the stitch pattern again, you would finish out this color, put on the main color again, and then finish it there. If you want it uh, to uh, this length here, you're going to want uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, colors of the main color, okay? So why don't you pause your video and uh, meet me back up at this point here and we'll finish this off together. We'll see you soon. All right, we have come down to the very last stitch and you can see again, mine's the one where um, we're gonna have to add that extra row of single crochet, but if you had done the one where you don't have to do that, you can just finish by simply yarning over and pulling through the last two stitches like that. And then all you need to do is yarn over and pull through again and then cut off your yarn and then you'll weave in this tail and you'll be done with it. But you can see how um, the reason why uh, you need that extra single crochet if you worked with only the one loop on the foundation is see how this one looks taller here and this looks shorter here. So to solve that, let's come through this last part here and you had this last one to pull through. So we're gonna pull through with this main color and then we're going to chain one and turn. And then you can drop your previous yarn. You don't have to uh, work that in as you go anymore. And you're gonna go just like you've done before. First uh, stitch here, you're just gonna single crochet and then go to the next one and single crochet. No more double crochets as you go along. And so go along to the very end and then we'll fasten it off together. Pause your video and I'll see you there. This is how we're gonna fasten it off. We're just gonna pull through that last stitch and then go around one more time and make a large loop. Go ahead and cut that. And then you could just pull through that working yarn. You no longer need it. And now you have this tail from the end and the tail from the beginning. And then of course we had already cut off uh, our beginning uh, tail where we had uh, the white in the very beginning, that second color. And so now this one is already woven in. I suggest pulling it and seeing if you have any extra slack. Go ahead and take care of that now. Cutting that off. 
for the white or your your second color and then these here just need to be woven in so uh, normally when we weave in our tails uh, you can kind of go down and around all these different stitches but I would concentrate and stay in the same color family that you were in so you just take your yarn and your tapestry needle and I like to go down through this first stitch down here and weave that in closer to the beginning Kind of go underneath the stitch here with the other con contrasting yarn is and come up so we have a nice secure connection and then you can just kind of follow along around where all these stitches are and weave in your tails following your stitches that you've already made okay the best thing to do for your tails is to make sure that um, you go around um, all of them uh, in different directions. So if you uh, want to um, follow around this way and go up through and kind of make your way down here, you can also come back here and lock that in. If you're using this to weave in and sew it, um, sew it to a panel or anything like that, you can keep this tail long and use that for sewing later on as well. Um, just uh, stitch it in as you feel the need. One more problem solving thing I just wanted to show you, just in case you had a little issue, is if you turn this over in the back, I've, I've left this so I can show you. I, I purposely left one of these lines very long. That's where I'm carrying my yarn uh, down through uh, the middle here. And if you see one that's long, I actually had it uh, down towards the end here. Just pull it until it's towards the center here. Just use your tapestry needle and you can kind of figure out which one that is. And pull it until you get to the middle and this one's let's see one more over and it should be closer and I'm gonna pull it between these two stitches here okay so this is towards the middle and got eased up my tension here and then all I'm gonna do is just simply take my scissors and cut this one short here and here and then when I pull on it those ends will tuck nicely underneath those stitches and I have a really great piece to show off and attach to my project. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed making your hound's tooth in crochet today. I've enjoyed teaching you. Be sure and click down to subscribe below and give us a note below and let us know if you're working on your hound's tooth as a project or if you're um, working on the Harry Styles one, I'd love to know. Uh, please join us for our next video and we'll be teaching how to make the hound's tooth on knitting needles as well as the loom. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.